Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Inman. This is another of the many lectures that we're delivering on various disease processes that we treat with laser and also the VOM technology, one of which that we've treated and has plagued veterinarians for eons, essentially, is a condition called laminitis. So this is about the equine. Laminitis is a phenomenon that occurs in the corium of the actual hoof. Our hand, basically, the bone connects to the fingernail through the lamina underneath our fingernails. Very, very painful, very, very sensitive. The horse has the same type of situation where they're, in fact, hoof, they're standing on their fingernail, and it's not connected to their body through bone, but rather through a lamina, which is connective tissue, like under your fingernail, that attaches it to the bone. So when that tissue becomes injured uh, due to lack of blood or other injury, essentially what happens is a significant amount of pain. And the function for pain, as we have shown you over and over and over, and we show you on the website, vomtech.com, is vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction breaks down the, the blood supply to those tissues and causes them to degradate, which causes more pain, which causes more vasoconstriction, which then produces more and more and more problems, essentially, with that foot. It is incredibly painful. The animal can have it on the front two legs or all four legs, essentially, where the animal really can't limp on all four legs. It's a miserable disease condition. It has killed millions and millions of horses because it's very difficult to treat. One of the problems with treating laminitis in the equine, and a lot of things with the equine, is everything is so far out on the, on the horse, so far away from their heart or their central body, essentially, vasoconstriction in the extremities is a big, big problem. Uh, vasodilatative products such as isosporin have been used, but they're systemic vasodilatative. We need to actually cause increased blood supply to the actual corium of the foot, in other words, to the actual lamina of the foot. Acupuncturists have done that by going around and they call circling the actual uh, lesion by actually putting uh, uh, acupuncture pins on what's called the ting points, T-I-N-G points, where the bladder uh, and other meridians of acupuncture actually reflect on the coronary band, and that can bring blood supply to the tissue. We find that animals that do in fact have uh, uh, a condition of laminitis, usually in the front of their body, actually have a subluxation that occurs at the lower lumbar, or at the lower uh, area of the neck, essentially, at the C6 and C7 area, C5, C6, C7, which basically is either there because of the pain, and therefore causing vasoconstriction, or the actual phenomenon of vasoconstriction causing is caused by that phenomenon. Nonetheless, we adjust those animals. However, that doesn't necessarily allow the, the, the actual foot to heal itself effectively. And this can be long-standing for months to years, or it can be an acute phenomenon where the animal was sound the next uh, yesterday but isn't today. The animal's also th sometimes thought to have gotten into different feed. Very commonly getting into different feed will cause the absorption of vasoconstrictive elements like ergotamine that's like seen in fungus and feed and it gets into the system and increases the amount of vasoconstriction. Now all the horses that were in the pasture essentially only one horse gets laminitis or maybe two of them but the fact of the matter is both of those or one of those horses is also more prone to getting a vasoconstrictive event as they all ingest the same thing, a vasoconstrictive uh, event that pushes the animal over the edge and produces this self-propagating problem of laminitis, which can accelerate very quickly. What also can happen is the hoof itself will change continually over a period of months and start to rotate down towards the ground and actually move through the bottom of the hoof into the actual dirt where the bone now is sticking into the dirt which is a disaster that is called rotation i'll show you a little bit more on an x-ray here what that looks like this is commonly how the animal will present itself basically try not to stand on any of those legs at the same time notice that this horse is trying not to put weight on the front legs that are actively involved with a laminitis but the rear legs are also probably involved in this poor horse this horse is miserable and this is not okay we start to look at this as far as the way it's occurring with the actual uh, diagram. Essentially, the normal hoof has the lamina right here, and this is the last uh, bony digit, essentially, that's in the foot. It's actually uh, the third digit. 
um, it's the end of the third phalanx at the third uh, digit of the foot, which is what the hoof is essentially. And the hoof attaches to the lamina. However, when we have laminitis, we end up with this phenomenon of inflammation and we end up with this foot basically migrating and rotating downward through the sole. Once it punches through the sole, it's thought that, that once that infection gets up into the bone, essentially there's absolutely nothing that can be done for that animal and the animal's very commonly at that point is put down. We're going to show you how it is that we're going about to take care of those conditions with a combination of VUM plus laser. So whether we have rotation of the third phalanx into the dirt through the sole or not, essentially the animal can be acutely painful. We can take an animal that's had a severe laminitis for over a year essentially and uh, that are going to the killer and basically go ahead then and rehabilitate them. First of all, we adjust them which has a marginal amount of benefit, but the majority of the benefit is involved with the vasodilatative nature of frequency-specific low-level laser therapy. And so what we will do is we'll actually come in, it's hard for me to show you on this, but we come in and we laser the animal's uh, hoofs at this particular level. We, don't, we can do this from holding this particular laser at our hip. We don't have to come down on top of it at all. We can basically laser this particular area. It's hard for me to show you on this plastic uh, uh, deal, but it's hard to hold up a horse in this room. And so what happens here is this is the therapy for about 120 seconds. We use the frequency, if it's open, we use the frequency for infection, 784. We use the frequency for uh, laminitis and bone, essentially, which is going to be 20.1 comma, uh, 45 for bone comma, connective tissues 20.1, and also for pain, which is 465. We may use a complete series of frequencies for pain. Remember the pain from laminitis causes vasoconstriction. It's vasoconstriction that is our enemy here. And so if we can reverse that with either pain medication or using the pain aspects of these particular, this particular therapy, we'll be able to go ahead and rehabilitate that. We also use another double lasered approach where we'll actually um, laser this animal's um, with a double red laser like this, while we're actually lasering this animal's frame and magnum. The two-headed laser approach has been effective. We've taken animals that haven't been able to barely walk for over a year, laser them, and 10 or 15 minutes later, they're running like a deer. Now, we haven't fixed them, but what we've done is we've actually released majority of their pain with the use of this laser. We have actual uh, radiogra I'm sorry, uh, movies on situations just exactly like this. So this can be an effective way for us to treat that. I would mention to you that when we can treat this animal aggressively, the animals in acute pain we may treat them daily for six days and then once every third day for another couple of weeks and then once um, every three weeks probably for four or five months sometimes to try to get these animals straightened out to get them straightened out and get that p3 to come back up essentially into normal and allow us to be able to use that i would mention to use a lot of times however there is some architectural changes in the hoof and it always looks a bit funky for the rest of the animal's life but the animal is sound enough to be able to be used essentially as a, um, uh, a, a riding horse essentially that's used for whatever they're going to use it for. However, very commonly a laminitis racehorse never really races again because unfortunately they are insured and once they get laminitis the um, history has been very poor so they're not treated, they're just put down for insurance money which is another um, lecture all together, by the way. So thank you for taking the time to look at this laminitis. If you have any questions, please contact me at 888-935-4866. And also, and also I would uh, have you go to the vomtech.com website and we'll show you how we do dogs, cats, and horses, how we use laser and how we actually um, deliver this technology. I'll show you how to do it for free, essentially because we want you to treat these animals as best you can. Thank you and have a great day.